The folks over at Torbox sent me this. This is their latest product, which is an illustration slash photo slash video editing controller. Torbox is sponsoring this video because they wanted to see how I would work their controller into my workflow. The idea here is that this replaces your keyboard. So when you're drawing on your tablet, you don't have to reach around looking for all those keyboard shortcuts or fumble around with the full size keyboard. And I can customize this to do everything I need and just set it off to the side. Let's take a look at what comes in the box. First of all, we have a full color instruction manual. We have the controller itself. It's about the size of two mice put together, but it's got some good weight to it. You can set it on a Cintiq or something else that's on a pretty decent angle and it's not just going to slide off. It also has these little rubber feet on the bottom that are gonna help it grip. Also in the box is a nice braided USB cord. So nothing complicated, pretty easy to set up. Plug it on in, download the software, install, and you're off to the races. This thing looks like a video game controller, not only just because of the directional pad, but because you've got these different buttons and knobs and scroll wheels. And I am using this today plugged into the Samsung Galaxy Book Flex. And the reason why is I think this is the perfect match for a lot of these Windows notebooks that come with pens. Let me show you why. Because I depend a lot on keyboard shortcuts, but when you actually get in here and I get this down to a nice drawing position, you completely lose all of those, those keyboard shortcuts that you rely on to be efficient. The tour box is fully customizable. You can set the function keys and shortcuts from a wide range of software. I wanna do a quick tour of the settings and how this works. First of all, we have our preset list, so you can actually jump in and create your own preset however you want for whatever program you want. There's even an auto mode, so if I turn this on, it's automatically gonna detect, hey, you're in Photoshop or you're in Lightroom, and it's gonna change my shortcuts based on that. There's a whole bunch of presets over on Torbox's website that you can also download. There's some for Premiere Pro, there's several different ones for Photoshop, Affinity Photo, Final Cut Pro, DaVinci Resolve, even Clip Studio. It is fully customizable, so if I wanna customize a button, what do I do? I press it, and it takes me exactly to where that is in my list. I wanna customize another one. It shifts it around. No, I wanna customize this one. It's a great way to navigate your way around this without having to guess what knob or what button is mapped to what. Also, it gives you a little map down here to tell you, hey, this is what each of these buttons are called over here on this side. So I'm gonna customize the down button. I don't use the stamp tool much, so I'm just gonna go ahead and click on that. And you can see here, I have a whole bunch of shortcuts that I can come in and grab and do whatever I want. Uh, if you wanna sort through these, they have a bunch of built-in functions as well. For example, there's some functions built in around detail. There's other ones just built for color. So if you wanna get really granular with this thing, it lets you do that. There's some great user-friendly features here. A simple layout with a functional tag system that allows you to easily access the tools without a lot of practice or memorization. The other thing that's worth talking about that I've hidden off to the side here that'll come in really handy later is this little thing that I'm dragging around here. This is called the HUD. And what this is telling me is what all of these directional buttons are mapped to. Now, the other cool thing about this is, is let me pull up Photoshop for a second and then I'll pull this over here. Can you see it on the camera? Sometimes life is just easier if I zoom in the camera. So that's what I did. So what I wanted to show you is that some of these buttons bring up alternative tools. So if I tap on the side button, you can see that I have my secondary tools pop up. If I press this button, you can see I have more tools pop up. Now that's cool, but when you're using this, you're gonna start to see how useful it is because I need to talk about the ergonomics. This is designed to be used one-handed without looking. You can focus on your work without staring at the screen and looking for buttons. When I use it, my hand is resting comfortably like this and I'm drawing with my other hand. Now, one of these buttons that my thumb is just naturally sitting on, I have mapped to undo and the other one next to it is mapped to redo. The other thing that I have going for me is if I wanna change my brush size on the fly, my thumb just moves back to this big dial here and I can increase my brush size or decrease my brush size as I go. And so all I have to do is move my thumb in order to adjust that and it works super well 
because it's just your thumb moving around and that's the main thing I'm doing when I'm drawing. I'm undoing and I'm changing my brush size. Occasionally, I'll need to do something like pan around. Well, what do you know? My thumb is in range of that button as well. Or when I get to the coloring mode of this comic, my thumb is shifting down here and this turns into my little eyedropper tool, which allows me to grab the color from the canvas that I need. So the things that I'm using 90% of the time when I'm drawing are right there within the range of my thumb. And once I get into the flow of drawing, I'm not even looking at this or the buttons along the side. I'm just flipping between what I need. Now, I mentioned before the directional pad is where I have my little HUD tool linked up over here. Now I mentioned before these little directional keys is, are where I have my little HUD tool hooked up here from before and what do you know you know my hand my side of my hand my pinky is resting on that side button so I can press that and grab my lasso tool or something else if I need to move things around or another finger can rest up here on this top button and I can shift to some of my other tools like my fill tool or my free transform tool. So just with the movement of a couple of my fingers I can cover everything that I need to do in photo Photoshop. So I'm gonna start drawing. We'll come back in a minute and I'll show you a couple other bells and whistles we have here. All right, so that is the illustration. It was great to be able to complete this entire piece without having to flip around to my keyboard or go up to these menus up here to undo. This is a pretty in-depth application, it gives you precise brush control, flexible tool switching, and parameter adjustments. There are some things that I only really got to scratch the surface of. For example, the zoom in and out on this dial was really handy. The brush sizing was really heavy. I never really got to use this dial, but I want to show you some of the things you could do with it. I hope you like this new view. Got a nice little picture in picture thing going on. This is the type of thing that is great for making adjustments or playing around with photography and trying different things. So I'm going to go up to image, I'm going to go down to adjustments, and then I'm going to go down to hue and saturation. And it brings up this nice little dialog box for me. So this is a comic book panel and its purpose is to communicate part of the story to you. And the part of the story here is that ribbon is important. The character is reaching for that ribbon, not the pencils, not the little dagger, not the books. And so to do that, I wanted that color red to pop. And honestly, I don't think that it's really doing that right now. So I have my dial here over on my left and I can come in here and adjust the saturation. Now if I turn that dial up, you're gonna see that those colors on that layer get even more intense. Instead of the desk being brown, now it's like an orange, that math book is really blue, that science book is really green, and so now that ribbon doesn't show at all. So I'm gonna dial that back, and we'll just scroll it back to where it was, and then I'm gonna keep going down. Now it's at like negative 25%. 
Now I've taken some of the color out of those images and it helps that ribbon pop. I could even dial it down even more. Let's go all the way down to zero here really quick. And you can see now it's just a black and white image. Now it really pops. Now I think that draws too much attention to it. So I'm just gonna dial it up a little bit. Maybe we'll go up into the 60s, maybe, maybe around negative 30, 37. That looks pretty good. Now this video is just limited to Photoshop, but I could really see this coming in handy if you're using Lightroom or if you're using Premiere Pro and you wanna scrub through your timeline. One last thing, there is a software update coming to Torbox. They're adding a complete set of Lightroom related built-in functions with 100 new functions. Two new renewed default presets for Premiere Pro. One especially for editing and another one for color grading. Fully optimized for Premiere Pro, significant improvement over the previous experience. They're also adding language support, language updates for German, French, Spanish, and Italian. And lastly, multiple presets that are associated with connecting working processes. So that was the Tor Box. What do you think? Let me know down below in the comments how you would use this thing. Thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you in a couple of days.